to the Graduate School of Education ceremony for the 175th commencement at Fordham University. We extend a special welcome to those joining us virtually. For the 75th year, the start of the annual academic procession has begun with the traditional ringing of the victory bell. The bell was presented to Fordham University by Admiral Chester Nimitz as a memorial to the Fordham alumni who died fighting for their country during World War II. The ship's bell is from the aircraft carrier Juno, which served in the Pacific before it was silenced by an aerial bomb at Saipan. The bell was first rung at Fordham by President Harry S. Truman on the occasion of his receiving an honorary degree in 1946. Leading today's academic procession is Dr. Diane Rodriguez, professor, professor excuse me, in the Division of Curriculum and Teaching of the Graduate School of Education. Dr. Rodriguez is carrying the Graduate School of Education Verge, Elizabeth Cafaro Hamilton, a master's candidate in education and administration and supervision, is carrying the Graduate School of Education banner. Next in the procession are candidates for degrees from the Graduate School of Education, founded in 1916 under the name of Teachers College in the Woolworth Building in Manhattan. The school operates today on Fordham's Lincoln Center campus in Manhattan, the Westchester campus in West Harrison, New York, and here at the Rose Hill campus. All candidates for master's degrees and advanced certificates are wearing hoods with a gold velvet border, Hoods for the Doctor of Education candidates have a light blue border, while the hoods for Doctor of Philosophy candidates have a dark blue border. Next in the procession are members of the faculty of the Graduate School of Education and the administration of Fordham University. At the end of the procession are the Dean of the Graduate School of Education, Dr. Jose Luis Alvarado, and the university's president, the Reverend Joseph M. McShane of the Society of Jesus. And now, please welcome Professor of Curriculum and Teaching, Dr. Diane Rodriguez, our Master of Ceremonies for the 2020 Ceremony for the Graduate School of Education. Good afternoon, Father McShay, Provost Jacobs, Dean Alvarado, Bishop Hennings, graduates, families, friends, faculty and staff of the Graduate School of Education, and welcome to the graduation of the class of 2020. My name is Diane Rodriguez, and I'm a professor in the Division of Curriculum and Teaching of the Graduate School of Education. As we start our ceremony, please turn off or silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. 
At this time, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Jose Luis Alvarado, the Dean of the Graduate School of Education, who will address the class of 2020. Good afternoon. Graduates, this is your day. However, here today and also viewing from afar are those who helped you reach this day. Before we proceed, graduates, please thank those parents, grandparents, siblings, spouses, partners, friends, and others who supported you in your work. Please stand, turn to your family, friends, and thank them. Thank you so much. Also, let us thank, take this moment to honor any veterans among our graduates or guests. Would you please stand and let us show you our appreciation for your service. Veterans. Thank you. I offer my heartfelt congratulations to all our professional masters and doctoral students who earned degrees in January, May, and August 2020. We are extremely proud of all of you for what you've accomplished, and we're honored to count you among our distinguished graduates. There is no question that during your time here at Fordham, you worked extremely hard for this exceptional academic achievement. I commend you for your perseverance and grit, especially as you successfully navigated the difficult challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Just as our faculty were incredibly skilled and knowledgeable educators who creatively and thoughtfully responded to students' academic needs by quickly pivoting to remote learning, you as students in our programs also had to pivot your learning. What was familiar suddenly became foreign. The bond you established with your, with your fellow students suddenly seemed distant. A sudden transition to remote learning can be an isolating and lonely experience. Yet, the rigor and demands of our academic programs remain, remained. Without a doubt, each of you was placed in a tough situation. I am deeply sorry for the pain and sorrow that this pandemic has caused, yet, we stand here as a testament to your resilience and your tenacity. You give us cause to celebrate. As Fordham GSI alumni, I encourage you to continue with your love for learning and further the, the honed skills that you've gained to even greater accomplishments as educational practitioners, scholars committed to serving diverse populations. On behalf of Fordham's Graduate School of Education, I wish you a hearty congratulations on your academic accomplishments and look forward to learning about the many impacts you will make in the future. Congratulations. Now, it is my pleasure to welcome Fordham's president, the Reverend Joseph F. McShane of the Society of Jesus to deliver his remarks. Father McShane. Dr. Jacobs, Dean Alvarado, Bishop Henning, members of the faculty, staff, and administration, members of the families of the graduates whom we are sending out into the world today, and members of the glorious, visionary, Dodrin's Bicentennial Class of 2020. Two footnotes here. First, Bishop Henning. Bishop Henning has joined us, and you can see him at the end of the platform party in the front row. He is the auxiliary, uh, no, auxiliary bishop of the Diocese of Rockwell Center. For those of you who don't know where Rockwell Center is, the Diocese of Rockwell Center is Nassau and Suffolk counties on Long Island. Uh, and he uh, came in this afternoon so he could be with one of his priests, who is right over there, who is completing his doctoral studies at Fordham, and he wanted to support him. So Bishop Henning, thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's a great, great 
joy for us. And especially if you're a priest. <coughs> Second, I just uh, slipped, a, uh, slipped something in. I refer to you as the visionary Dodrin's Bicentennial class. No reaction. Visionary, 2020. What can I say? It's, a, uh, it's not a great joke, but what can I say? Dodrin's Bicentennial, you are members of the class of 2020. Therefore, you're members of the 175th class in the university's history. And the 175th anniversary is referred to as the Dodrin's Bicentennial. So I want you always to remember that and walk with swagger. You know, the visionary Dodrin's class. Drop that at reunions. No one else can say it except you. And people will just be agog when you tell them that. Now, my dear friends, I'd like to begin my remarks with a story. A story about a teacher who was very close to my heart. My father, who was a Fordham College graduate and a high school teacher for 11 years before he became a lawyer, had a cousin whose name was Mary Elizabeth McCoy. Mary Elizabeth was a sister of charity of New York, who was about 5'4 on a good day who spent her entire life as a first grade teacher in grammar schools in Manhattan and the Bronx. In fact, she spent more than 50 years teaching first graders. I was in awe of her. So at the end of her life, I asked her if she had really spent 50 years teaching first graders. Because that's what I had heard at family gatherings. And she said no. She told me that in the middle of her career, she was assigned to teach the second grade. At the end of that fateful year, however, she begged her principal to send her back to the first grade. I was stunned. I couldn't imagine why she would or could willingly choose to spend her life teaching only first graders until I went to her wake. In the course of the evening session of the wake, two women, actually three women, sought me out to tell me about her work. The first one told me that my cousin had taught her in the first grade, where else, in an urban parish grammar school. I asked her why she remembered a teacher whom she hadn't seen for decades. And she looked at me like I was the village idiot. Taking pity on me, she said quite simply and eloquently, your cousin gave me the gift of reading, and so she gave me the world. Stunned again. She did not say that my cousin had taught her how to read. Uh-uh. That was too prosaic. She said that my cousin had given her the gift of reading and so gave her the world. She wandered off and another woman tapped me on the shoulder as I was reflecting on what I had just heard. I wheeled around and saw another woman. She introduced herself and told me that, you guessed it, my cousin had taught her in what else? the first grade in the same grammar school that the first woman had attended. I was all ears. I was all in. She then proceeded to tell me that many years after she had graduated and moved on with her life, she ran into my cousin on a bus in the Bronx. She approached my cousin tentatively and said to her, Sister, I'm sure that you don't remember me, but you taught me in the first grade at St. Raymond's School decades ago and I just wanted to thank you for all that you did for me. She then told me that my cousin looked at her and said, of course I remember you. You sat in the third seat from the back of the row, uh, room in the second row from the windows. I looked at the woman and I said, and, and, is that where you sat? You bet it was, she said. Imagine her remembering me after all those years. Can you believe it? Well, I was beginning to believe that my cousin could do just about anything, and so I nodded my head and said not a word. Before she left, the woman told me that she just wanted to let someone in our family know just how much my cousin had done for her so many years earlier. Well, I had barely enough time to recover from the second encounter when a third woman, a member of the staff of the retirement home where my cousin lived, stepped up and said to me in a very conspiratorial voice, let me tell you something about your cousin. I said, okay, once again, I'm in. Then looking around to see if anyone was listening, 
and in a very low voice, she told, him, told me that this seemingly innocent retired nun had taken on a hidden mission that her superiors knew nothing about. She would gather together the Spanish-speaking members of the kitchen and housekeeping staffs during their lunch breaks every day to teach them how to speak, read, and write English. Hmm. Now, I thought I knew my cousin pretty well, but I was completely unaware of the fact that for all those years, she had been nothing less than a miracle worker and a quiet renegade who drew outside the lines to bring the liberating and empowering blessing of education to people whom the world ignored. Hmm. Miracle workers who bring the liberating and empowering blessing of education to young people and so change their worlds. I think that just about captures who you are and who you are called to be. Miracle workers who have stories told about them in quiet moments in the mo most unexpected places, like Irish wakes and Sunday dinners. Now, our sages have told us that God created the human family because he loves stories. If that is true, and I'd like to believe it is, I would imagine that he takes a special delight in the lives and works of teachers, and with good reason. Your bold, determined, but gentle miracle workers who unlock the power of stories for their children, their students, students of all ages and all backgrounds. You are, therefore, men and women, and I hope you don't mind my saying this. You're men and women after God's own heart. Always remember that. If you doubt me, consider the evidence from my statement by reflecting on your own lives, who you are, what you do, what you delight in doing, and what you're called to do for the rest of your lives. In an age that is all too obsessed with surface appearances, you see, celebrate, and protect the dignity of children, the dignity that is more precious than passing fads or mere appearances. In an age that all too frequently judges people on material possessions, you nurture dreams and dreamers who can see beyond the moment and over the horizon of the present. In a world that's too busy for contemplation, you insist on taking the long view and encourage deep thinking about questions of meaning and value. In a world that can all too often not hear the heartfelt or heart-rending stories of, live, of those who live on the margins, you feel called to help the forgotten find their voices, to tell their stories, to write their stories, stories that celebrate the inestimable worth of each individual. And so, my friends, do you see why I think that you are men and women after God's own heart? And by the way, this lesson has been hammered home to everyone in the country, everyone in the world, especially everyone in New York during the pandemic. We talk about frontline workers, and rightly so. We praise them, and rightly so. But do we praise teachers enough? Teachers who stood by their students, who watched over them, who gave them a sense of comfort, a sense of well-being, and a sense of hope. This is what you have done throughout the pandemic, quietly, without fanfare, without seeking the limelight. You have been heroic when no one was looking. You've been people of character when character mattered most. You are men and women after God's own heart. You really are, and you're called to be miracle workers who refuse to write anyone off. You can and will empower your students by cherishing and challenging them in equal measure so that they can come into the full and glorious possession of all the gifts that God has given them. Now, if what I have said is true, and I really believe I, it is, let's be honest. You're different from all others, very different. Not odd, not eccentric, different. For you see, you will never have a job or merely a profession. Rather, you are chosen ones in our midst who have a vocation, a noble vocation, a sacred vocation the vocation that God in his wisdom has called you to. And that vocation is this, vocation of caring for students, 
vocation of believing in students more than students believe in themselves, the vocation of sparking hope in the hearts of those entrusted to your care, the vocation of giving your students the world through the gift of reading and setting them free to explore that world to their endless delight, the vocation of transforming the world one heart, one soul, one student at a time. And let's be honest, you can't help yourselves. You're drawn to this. As draining as it is, as taxing as it is, you're drawn to this. Why? Because that's your vocation, not your job, not your career, not your profession. It's your vocation. And now, my friends, on this day on which we celebrate in your rich restlessness of heart, I hope you won't mind if I offer this prayer for you. Let us bow our heads in prayer. God of all wisdom, watch over these, your chosen ones. Walk with them. Encourage them in their work. Nurture in them ever greater dreams for their students and for the world. Give them the strength that they will need to live out their vocations as teachers with wisdom, kindness, boldness, fearlessness, generosity, and great hope. Amen. And to you, members of the visionary Dodrin's Bicentennial class, I say congratulations. Go forth now and set the world on fire. Transform lives. Do what God has called you to do. Be whom God has called you to be. God bless you all. Thank you, Father McShane. We're now ready for Dean Alvarado to present scrolls to our graduates. We will begin with the master's degree and professional diploma graduates. We will present them by division starting with graduates from the Division of Curriculum and Teaching. Eileen Elizabeth Interiano. Alexander Ching. Jennifer Di Aquila. Allison McElligot. Jeffrey Umbrell. Madison Arlene Kona. Megan Smith. Iliana Di Gennaro. Dr. Terry Orr, Chairperson of the Educational Leadership Administration and Policy Division, will present the master's degree graduates of the division to the dean. James Grillo, Elizabeth Cufaro, Lori Ann Cecil, Jessica Holden, Roberto Liberato. Christine Cooper. Grace Campbell Hay. Michelle Majori. Stephen Asoma. Stephen Gerlight the second.
Thank you, Dr. Orr. Dr. Fran Bloomberg, Chairperson of the Psychological and Educational Services Division, will present the master's degree graduates of the division to the dean. Sherry Lynn Lilly. Samantha Anna Durazio. Rena Layla Tights. Rhea Abut Robinson. Emily Page Rayleigh. Ileana Pinon. Kathleen E. Fitzgerald. Deanna Kaplan. Lauren Merritt. Carolyn A. Yasharian. Yasmin Sarah Laguerre. Sonia Sandra Sewell. Michelle Perez. Nasia Martinez. Miranda Tiffany Hassanjayaj. Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. Please join me in congratulating our master's degree and professional diploma graduates. <laughs> Dr. Aida Nevarez La Torre, associate professor in the Division of Curriculum and Teaching, will present the doctoral graduates to the dean and the graduate mentor for hooding. Approaching the stage are the doctoral graduates from the Contemporary Learning and Interdisciplinary Research Doctoral Program, the Division of Psychological and Educational Services, and the Division of Ed Educational Leadership, Administration, and Policy. Rachel Elaine Bashart Mann. <laughs> Kristen Elizabeth Cohn. Brian Manuel Simmons. <laughs> Dr. Tomasita Ortiz Duran. <laughs> Dr. Dam Tapiwa Barker. Dr. Deidre Basolino. Dr. Erin Elizabeth Ott. Dr. Ashley Marie Rodriguez. <laughs> 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 
Dr. Hannah Floyd Sugarman. Dr. Silvio Balsano. Dr. Mahaliel Bethea II. Dr. Adam Breyer. Dr. Donique Dakabe Dautry. <laughs> Dr. Tracy Leticia Jackson. Dr. Patricia Murray. Dr. Simon Obas. Dr. Nancy Rosario Rodriguez. Dr. Sarah Schindler Ruback. Dr. Varga Vayas. <laughs> Dr. Collins Andrew Aduchum. Dr. Gabriela Brown. <laughs> Dr. Sophia Kohal.
Dr. Valerie Therese Serp. Dr. Michelle Gorelick Nemet. Good partner. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Nevarez La Torre. Please join me in congratulating all of our doctoral degree graduates. This concludes our Graduate School of Education Diploma Ceremony. We will soon begin the academic recessional. First, on behalf of the administration, faculty, staff, alumni of the Graduate School of Education. Again, congratulate the class of 2020. I wish our graduates many inspired and productive academic and scholarly engagement, as well as rewards and happiness, both personally and professionally. The class of 2020.